You know what that is? That is St. John's, Newfoundland. In Newfoundland, some of you may think is the end of the world, but it's not. But up here on Signal Hill, actually, I can see the end of the world from here. Anyhow, welcome to Mike's Mail, episode three, and we're on a road trip here. And um, I came out to Newfoundland to check out the rock climbing that they have. I heard that it was rumored that they had some, and any place, you know, you live on an island called The Rock, as it, the locals call it, um, you gotta assume there is rock climbing here. Turns out there is. Um, if you decide, you know, I, I think this would be a great place if you wanted to, um, you had a week off or a week and you wanted to go rock climbing someplace and you just didn't want to go back to Squamish or back to Skaha or, you know, down to the desert or Vegas. You've done all those things a dozen times and you want to go someplace that's a little bit different, then uh, Newfoundland's your, your thing. Uh, there's a guidebook that's available in a couple of climbing shops in town. And it was created by a fella who runs the climbing gym here in Newfoundland. Um, Leo uh, put together, a, you know, a list of climbs. And there's certainly there's enough, you know, climbing here that you could last an entire summer. But if you just did the classics and you came for a week or something like that, I think you'd have a really great trip. Uh, Newfoundland can be notorious for its weather, of course. But uh, in the summertime, I think you'd be pretty fair to say you could get out just about every day, do some climbing. If not, uh, there's plenty of sightseeing here. And just over here is Cape Spear, um, the furthest most point east in North America, which is, you know, geographically, that's kind of interesting. And the history here is uh, fascinating. I mean, not only for the fishing, culture and the whaling culture that existed, but also for the military culture that uh, St. John's Harbor um, is famous for. So, anyhow, in this mail episode, we have a problem, and the problem is partially mine. I guess I created it, and so I'm going to have to solve it. As quite a few people have pointed out, um, what we called an equalized anchor, where we drew between, put in the knot, isn't truly an equalized anchor. In this case, the legs are independent of each other, and... I call this part here the shell, it has other names, and then this part the focal point. That's what you'd have. So the next uh, section we have here is the, um, comes from the equalized anchors again video and it, there's a number of comments on there about um, it's not being truly equalized and that the sliding X is the way that you want to design your anchors so this, in, in a sense yes okay it's not truly equalized the way that we're showing it it's truly dis, we're distributing the load so let's bring you up to speed here and <clears throat> You know, I'm probably going to come under fire for what I'm about to tell you, but uh, come on, you internet people, bring it. The, uh, I wouldn't, as a general rule, be using the sliding X if I'm building straight gear anchors, okay? And I haven't, I don't see anybody, it's not very common, not, at least not in my circle of friends and in the places that I hang out. Um, now, it does have an application, and I was climbing with a young fellow by the name of Scott Mackay on Yamnuska last year. Guy phones me up, obviously a better climber than I'll ever be, and uh, we go climbing. And I'm just about to publish, like push the button to go, hey, publish this Mike's Mail as is, and uh, let's get done with it and move on and find a sponsor one day. Anyhow, the... Uh, something happened. I go and the guy's using a sliding X. It's the first time in 20 some years and the guy's using a damn sliding X. So I have to ask him, dude, the sliding X and why? Well, he explains to me why he does right. it. Yeah. And the thought, my thought is at least, is like people always think the shock loading's a big issue, right? Yeah. But in this situation here, I'm not really leaning on it. And if you, for some reason you blow, well, you got this dynamic climbing rope in there yeah. too, right? There's some of that in the system. 
the knots limited a bit, plus they make it redundant, right? Like, if this goes, you snip that, but you're still in you're on You're still this, on right? that one. Oh, I see. Okay. Plus, you got the yeah the directional I mean, e like, equalization. Right? I can't remember the last time I was on a rock climb. And let's be honest, where, like, you had the same direction to pull the whole time, you know? Like it, right. It, even, like, when you popped up here, right? Like, right. if you were over there, and then you were a step back over here. Right. Because it's fast, like... I, I leave it set up like this. Oh, so you so you leave these in here. Oh you? yeah, like that way you can just clip clip. Yeah, I have this clip to this around my shoulder. Right. I show up with the blade clip clip, clove hitch in, and I'm I'm done. So I like it. Ah. Not, not all the time, right? Like. Oh, no, it gives you a separation point too there for hanging gear Good. differently, and I would too. I, I think it might be your time then you might want to consider. Uh, Maybe using a different belay, not one that is so direct off the anchor, but maybe a body belay or something like that. Something where the anchor becomes secondary and you become the primary stopping force. And then once you're pulled out of your stance, you've absorbed most of the energy from the person's fall. And then the anchor comes into play. And this greatly reduces the force on the anchor. So about 10 days later, I go and uh, I climb Rudon gooseberry on the back or I rock climb gooseberry on the back side of tunnel and what do I get well I get the sliding X yeah there's a guy there he's That's doing right. the same right. thing and so you're using this X thing here too right eh? like Which? the X on your anchors oh this is like the first I did this one time in 100 probably is that right <laughs> oh well I'm just finishing a video on this stuff I was just wondering because I've never seen you use it before no but, I mean, here, look, I had, this is, see, this this bolt was already here, and yeah. it's too low, right? Yeah. Well, to be honest, it's kind of stuck for good rock, so, I mean, I, I don't blame him for putting it there, but the only other, like, super sound spot we can find is way up here, which actually is better for the traverse, but if you want an equalized anchor, it doesn't really help you unless you put it. Two up there, it. same area. Two up there on the same rock. Of course, there's the peak on there, I guess he could... Whatever. You got a, like a bomber camera right off the anchor, so no big deal. Oh, I'm just curious. I just haven't seen these with all that often. No. But I th I started using it on Yamdo. This guy was using it on yeah. the bolted pitch, and it was quick, eh? Yeah. For bolted stuff, it's actually not bad. So there's two bolts. I'm on. Uh, like the fifth pitch of some big ass multi pitch route, and so now I have my gear sling set to jet. Just got to find to join the two carabiners together, pull it out, clip to one bolt, clip to the other bolt. I've already got my locking carabiner in there, so now I just bring up your clove hitch. Turn it up so it's nice and tight. Lock it off. Catch gear! And then that's it. It's quick, simple, and like we say, got a little bit of play. It'll be totally equalized. Two good bolts. I mean, you know, it's pretty hard to beat that actually. I would have been still fumbling around with, you know, Low distributed press it cord. But. And then I have, you know, with those knots being in there, I have multiple clip in points. So, like I say, not full tarred, but getting there. And, you know, once I analyzed it and looked at it and seen how quickly it was working, I uh, found myself using it too. And I never would have thought that in such a short period of time I could have been converted to something else other than the low distribution drawing between the two and then or three pieces of gear uh, tie the figure eight and let's be done with her um, I figured that was about the simplest and safest way of doing things but uh, in this instance with the bomber bolts um, and you're climbing with a partner of equal or better ability this may well be the uh, tool of choice.
So he gets to the belay station. He should be here any minute now. I got about 15 meters of rope left. It's going to be tough for you people who aren't on the metric system to try and figure that out. Get up, belay! So we take Buddy off the lay, get set to jet. Just to leave you a point, I was talking about this article with Will Gadden, and what he said was interesting to me was that if he didn't have like a bomb-proof piece in his anchor, that changed the way he looked at his anchor completely. He had to have at least one solid bomb-proof piece. And what do we mean by bomb-proof? We mean bomb-proof, like it cannot fail. And you know that piece when you put it in, or you should, right? So you gotta have at least one, two is better, three, why not, eh? Just... Okay, that's me! So now, i got to get ready to go. He's going to put me on belay. I'm on belay, so I just heard. So, I just take this off. I'm out. Put my directional beaner down. This is the sling with its two. And I can do this one of two ways now. I can leave the locking carabiner in there. Go like this. And the beaner's ready and everything's ready to go. Okay, climbing! Okay, and I'm set to jet, and that's all it was to take the anchor down. And it's clip clip, and it's ready to go when I'm ready to go. So, you know, I guess an old dog can learn new tricks. Where you draw the cords between, and then anticipate the direction of load, and then isolate a focal point by tying a knot, and then leaving an end where you can clip in, um, is load distribution is what we're talking about there. So we're trying to dis distribute the load amongst a number of pieces. Um, could be one, could be two, could, you know, could be three, four, five different pieces and we're trying to distribute the load equally amongst those people in order to try and build a, a stronger anchor. Of course is the religious one and that's the sliding X. And with them, with the, or with that style of uh, or that design of anchor, um, if you didn't anticipate the load directly, it self-corrects itself. You know, so you pull it over in one direction and it um, it's, it re-angles the load onto, onto the pieces that you're using to construct the anchor. And, you know, if, or if, you, if you, it gets pulled in another direction, the uh, load is anticipated or the direction of load is re-equalized amongst the pieces. And the problem, I guess, well, not that I guess, the problem with that is, should a piece fail, you have uh, shock loading on the remaining pieces, <coughs> um, which, if you, if you think about it though, you're under the amount of tension, it's just not even, it's not even just the force of uh, gravity that's pulling on it, because you're, the forces that are applied are greater than those of gravity and so when that pace fails the shock pulls that much faster and that much harder and then that, that force is amplified and, and it's especially if you're trying to equalize a number of pieces that are marginal pieces you really have to think about do you know if one blows how, how's that going to affect the remaining two or three pieces of gear that you have in there I don't know how to tell you this, but I was converted. I saw the light. I went to the church of the Sliding X. Come, brethren, the Sliding X it is, the Sliding X. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to talk about the Sliding X. Yes. Now, I'm not, I'm not fully converted, you know. You never go full tarred. So, the... Um, but there are places where now I find myself using it. And that's on multi-pitch with has bolted stations. I can uh, 
meet the redundancy factor that is needed simply by doing this. And what you do is you take this and you tie a knot on one side, re-clip it back in. Now you tie, do the same thing to the other side, re-clip it back in. Now we still have our loop here, and now we have a distribution of force, we have a range of angle that we can work with, so if we didn't anticipate the forces or the direction of pull 100%, instead of, you know, it's, it's here instead of here, or here instead of there, um, the load will still be equally distributed. However, if a piece fails, it'll only travel so far and then the knot comes tight up against your carabiner or your focal point and then uh, it reduces the shock load on the second piece of gear. And uh, the, so I have the knots in the end there and then it's a twist and a tie or a twist clip, tie into it and then I'm good to go and it has a you know a degree of equalization involved in it and I know the pieces are bomb proof so you know I'm feeling pretty good about that and it's quick and simple to break down and that's the point I guess um, if it's strong it's redundant and it's fast and simple and in this case with this particular pieces of gear that I'm using I'm quite comfortable with that so a place where the distribution of force might be more critical is someplace like if you're you know I, I climbed up here and I'm I'm here and now I've got to build an anchor and I don't have two bolts to, to build it with but I do see this old funky old tree and as much as I may love this vegetation and it and admire it for its tenacity it's very shallow in the ground and uh, but I might sling it and add it to my anchor I pre-placed a couple of cams here to save you the uh, the pain of watching me place them right now here is some place with these cams behind you know it's a fairly big block but it is detached in a way but it seems pretty solid to me that I might uh, add the sliding X to the cams I've, I've done this uh, more times than you've had hot breakfasts and what I do then is I take bang bang I clip both the cams go in between I create my X loop because I want to distribute the force there now I incorporate the I want to incorporate the tree and I take another sling and I'm feeling really good because I have all this extra material right and then I'll anticipate the direction of load in this case it's going to be pretty close to where you are and I'll go back and I'll create my focal point and in this case now the distribution of force because I've incorporated the sliding X between those two cams the distribution of force to those two cams is really really good I have a fairly solid strength of tree I have an easily identifiable focal point that people can come up and clip into, right? And now if I want to add gear to it, so I've got a, you know, I may have a cam way back in the back 40 over there, clip that cam, incorporate it into my anchor. So I have my sliding X, a cam coming from way back, joined the system from quite a distance away. I have my tree and I have a central focal point that's easy to identify.